In this video, we are going to take an in-depth look at the compact material editor and the slate material editor. Which one should you use as someone who wants to take their visualization to the next level? Well, the best way to answer that question is to look into both of them, understand how they work, and then figure out which one of them is better. First of all, let's start by bringing out our material editor. Hit the M button on your keyboard to do just that, or click this button right here, like so. That will bring out the last material that was active. If you use Slate Material Editor last, Slate Material Editor will come out. If it is what Compact Material Editor that was used last in your machine, that is what will come out. Now you can switch between the two Material Editor by clicking on Modes on the menu bar, then selecting Slate Material Editor, just like that. You can also switch between them by clicking and holding down the Material Editor icon. Now you can slide your cursor to the one you want. Now, whenever I see someone using the Compact Material Editor, what comes to mind is that that person probably started using 3ds Max before 2011, or learned from someone who started using 3ds Max before 2011 and never cared to try out the Slate Material Editor. By the way, the Slate Material Editor was first introduced into 3ds Max in the 2011 update of the software. So, in as much as it works, I mean, I know some really good guys that uses the Compact Material Editor to produce awesome exterior and interior visualization. I personally believe that Compact Material Editor is limited and a lot of CG artists would agree because Slate Material Editor is what most people use these days. So let's look at the Compact Material Editor first. Hopefully when I'm done you will see reasons why I believe this Material Editor is limited. To explain better, let me create two boxes. Now, looking at this material editor, as the name suggests, it is compact and concise. The user interface is made up of the menu bar at the top, the sample slot, the two bars at the bottom and the right hand side of the sample slots. Okay? It then has several rollouts where you can set up your material and add maps. The sample slot is where the scene materials are stored and applied from. To apply materials to objects in your scene, there are two ways you can do that. You can select the material you want to apply and then drag it to the object in the scene. Or you can just select both the object and the material like so, and then click the Assign Material button to apply the material to the object. Now I need you to notice these white triangles at the edges of the sample slot. You also notice that these triangles are not exactly the same. One is open, the other one is filled. Why is that? Now the first one that is all stroke with no fill means the material is applied to an object in the scene somewhere. Now on the other hand, this second one that is solid not only means that the material is applied to an object in the scene, but also that the selected object has the material, that is the material that has this solid triangle on it, assigned to it. So if you have nothing selected, all the triangles will be open triangles. But when you select something, the material editor will also let you know the material associated with that object using the solid triangles. The slot that has no triangle at all simply shows that those materials have not been used in the scene. Now let's create a material using this material editor. Of course, we will be using Corona Legacy material as our base material. And to change this material from standard material to Corona materials, okay, click on the standard. Now, when you do that, you realize you can't find Corona materials anywhere. Do not worry, we'll fix that right away. Okay, so close it. Let's go to the render setup. Change the renderer to Corona. Now, let's go back to the material editor and check. Now, when you click on the standard, you will see that the Corona materials are now available. Select the Corona Legacy material and then click OK. In this basic parameters rollout, that is where important customizations are made. Here you can set your diffuse, which is basically how and what the material will look like. You can use color as well as bitmaps. Bitmaps here represent images of different formats that are compatible with your 3ds max okay let's go ahead and import one click on this little square here and that brings out the material map browser okay select corona bitmap and then find where the bitmap you want to use is in your local drive for that fuse we'll select this one
We will repeat the same thing for reflection, but then we will select a different map, the white and black one. Now for the bump, let's go down to the maps rollout. When we get to the bump, click on the no map button. Now because what we have is a normal map, click on the corona normal, then click OK. Next, click on no map. Now we can select the corona bitmap. Hit OK to open the window explorer dialog. Select the publish map. And then hit open. Right now we are two steps inside the materials. We are in the bitmap settings, which is in the corona normal settings, which is inside the map settings of the materials. Okay? Now we have nothing to adjust here, but we do have one thing to adjust in the corona normal settings. So to get back to the corona normal settings, we are going to use this button here, the go to parent button. Now we are in the corona normal map settings. All we have to do here is check the add gamma to input checkbox. Now let's get back to the material itself by clicking once more to the go to parent button. And that's how you create a material using the compact material editor. Now let's say along the line I want to edit the diffuse map. You know, maybe I want to reduce the saturation or increase the brightness or anything like that. That means I have to change this diffuse map from corona bitmap to corona color correction. Okay, so click on the M in the small square box. That will take you to the Corona bitmap setups. Click on the Corona bitmap button. That will bring out the material map browser. Select the Corona color correct. Then replace map dialog comes out. We don't want to discard the old map, so we will leave the option at the default, which is keep old map as sub map. Hit the OK button. Now we can adjust this material. Double click on the sample slot to bring out the preview window. Now when I reduce the saturation or increase the brightness, we'll see it in real time. Okay. Let me close this real quick. Now, on the input, you will see the corona bitmap we made the submap. If we click on it, it will take us into the corona bitmap settings. To get back to the main material, which is the corona legacy material, like we did before, click to go to parent button. That brings us out to the corona color correct settings. Clicking it again takes us back to the corona legacy material, and that's where we want to be. Now when I select this object, you can see that this material is already applied to it and we are seeing the texture of the material in the preview window of the sample slot. But we can see it on the object in the viewport. Okay? To see it in the viewport, click on the show shaded materials in the viewport button. That shows the material, the texture of the material in the viewport. Now in the maps rollout, you will see the different parts of the material where you assign maps. You can also see which one of them is active and the level of visibility of each and every one of them. Okay? Alternatively, you can also see that in the basic parameter, you have M next to every parameter you added map to. If the M is a capital M, that means the material is active. If it is a small M, that means it is not active. Here's an illustration for you. You see it's capital M right now, but if I go over to the map and uncheck this checkbox right next to diffuse, let's go back to the basic parameters. Now you see that the M is now a small M. You can copy and paste maps as well. You can just drag the map in the maps rollout to wherever you want. And when you let go, there are different options of how you can copy the map. You can either copy as an instance or make a unique copy or swap the maps. All right. You can also right click on the map you want to copy and then go over to where you want to paste it and right click again to paste it. Select the option that best suits your needs. Now let's go back to the sample slot. By default, we have 3x2 sample slots. 
you can use the scroll bars to navigate it or you can change it to make it smaller so you can see everything at once. You can hit the X button on your keyboard twice to get to this option or right click to select it. We have only 24 sample slots and every slot can hold only one material. So what happens if you have more than 24 materials in your scene? Then you have to start overriding or resetting them. With the right settings, resetting a sample slot will not delete its material already used in the scene. It just replaces the slot with a default sample slot. To reset a material, click on the material you want to reset and then click on the reset map material to default settings button. This second option is where you always want to be. So just hit the OK button. Now as you can see, we have reset the material but here in the viewport we can still see it. Now for whatever reason you have to make changes to the wood material that we just reset. Select a sample slot. With the pick material from object 2, click on the object to get its material to the selected sample slot where you can now go ahead and make the required changes you need to make. You can also copy an entire material. So to do that, drag and drop it into another sample slot. You can rename material from simply selecting the name like so and changing it to whatever you want and that becomes the name of the material. So that is it for the compact material editor. I hope to a reasonable extent you can now understand how it works. Now let's take a look at the select material editor. As we did for the compact material editor, let's take a look at the user interface. At the top, we have the menu bar, very identical to that of the compact material editor. Underneath that, we have the two bars. Some of these tools are the same as the one we have in the compact material editor, while others are specifically designed for these material editors. On the left hand side, we have the material map browser, where all the materials and maps available to you will be listed. Then the view panel where we'll be creating materials. On the right, we have the navigator which we use to see our material in the view panel when the view gets busy. Right underneath that is our material parameter editor. You can create more views if you want. This comes in very handy when you're working on complex projects. You can rename the views to whatever you want. You can also delete the views if you don't need them anymore. Okay, just have in mind that when you delete a view and there's a material in there that is not applied to any object in the scene, that material is gone for good. However, if you have it applied on an object in the scene, we can use the pick material from objects tool to pick it similarly to how we did it in the compact material editor. Now let's take a look at what this thing can do. First thing you need to notice is that everything is just out in the open. You don't need to open any map or material to get to the material parameter editor or bitmaps or materials. They are just there. You can just go to the material section, go to the corona materials rollout and drag it out in the viewport. Okay. When you double click it, the material settings will show up in the material parameters editor. Now this is exactly the same as that of the compact material editor. So you can change the settings of the materials as we did in the compact material editor. To delete the material, select it and hit the delete button on your keyboard. You can zoom in and out and also pan in the viewport with your middle mouse button, nothing new or special. Click on the minus to make the material more compact. Plus takes you back. If you double click on the preview, it will become larger. Right clicking on the material, brings out a bunch of options with which you can do a lot of things like rename your material, preview your materials, different selection options are also available and a lot of others. Okay? I suggest you play around with the various options here to see what everything does. Drag another Corona Legacy material into the viewport. Double click on the material. In the material parameter editor, you can change the colors using the diffuse. Now let's apply the material to the two boxes. You can drag the material to the object like so, or you can select both the material and the object and then hit assign material to selected object button. 
To create the same wood material we created in the compound material editor, all we have to do is click and drag on the dot right next to the diffuse color till you can see this line, then let go. Hover around Corona, then slide your mouse to the menu and select Corona bitmap. Select the map and then hit open. We are going to repeat the same thing for the reflection. Drag it out, let go, choose Corona bitmap, select the map we want, then hit open. For the bump, drag it out, let go, this time around, choose Corona normal, double click to get menu in the parameter editor. Check the add gamma inputs checkbox. Now go back to the Corona normal, right beside normal, drag out the dot and let go. This time select Corona bitmap, select the map you want and then hit open. And that's how you create material using the slate material editor. Now let's say along the line, I want to edit the diffuse map using the color correction map. All I have to do is drag and drop it in the line like so. And it automatically connects itself like so. Now I can make my changes. To see this material texture in the viewport, click on the show shaded material in the viewport button. This red stuff on the material shows the material texture is now visible in the viewport. Yes, we have the capital M's and small M's thing going on here too. So the same applies here too as it did for the compact material editor. That means you can tell when the map is active and you can copy them and swap them and all that. Now, like the compact material editor, we can have as many material as we want in this view alone. Mind you, you can create more views. So there is really no need to override or reset materials with this editor. To duplicate this material, Windows select the material and the maps. Hold and shift button and then click and drag it out to duplicate the material. Now you can make changes to it. To move the material or map at once without having to window select everything all the time, click on the move children button. Now whenever you select the parent tree, the children follows along. You can check out other tools up there, like this one lays out the materials vertically. And this one arranges the materials for hot. Now let's see the navigator. The navigator shines bright when you have materials far from each other like so. Now the navigator you see where you are in the view with respect to other materials. I personally prefer the slate material editor because everything is right there in the open which makes it easy to understand the material structures and makeups. The user interface is also friendly too and it makes workflow faster. The settings are there for you to see and edit. You don't have to go into a sub-material just to go into another sub-material then go back to parents and all that. You can just add and remove things right there in the view. Okay, I mean you can go into materials and parent materials if you want. Like I said, the material parameter editor is exactly the same thing as that of the compact material editor. But why would you do that? I mean, so if you are a 3ds Max user, I would suggest you choose the slate material editor. I know at first the nose and the wires might look intimidating, but trust me, once you get used to it, you will never go back to compact. Thanks for watching this video. I will see you in my next video.